At that moment, they were interrupted by the manager who came in with a groan. What's the matter, asked Mr. Greenbaum. The marvelous Marcos who's closed the program haven't turned up and the audience are demanding their money back. What are you going to do, asked Mr. Greenbaum. Give it to them, I suppose, and here it is, Saturday night, the biggest night of the week. I hate to think of losing all that money. I have an idea, said Mrs. Popper. Maybe you won't have to lose it. As long as it's the end of the program, why don't we just have the Penguins rehearse in there on a real stage? We'd have more room, and I think the audience would enjoy it. All right, said the manager. Let's try it. So the Penguins had their first rehearsal on a real stage. The manager stepped out on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, raising his hand, with your kind indulgence, we are going to try out a, lo a little novelty number tonight. Indulgence means um, in the act of allowing someone to do something, okay? Owing to unforeseen circumstances, the marvelous Marcos are unable to appear, okay? Unforeseen means that it's not expected. Remember the original act, the marvelous Marcos had to cancel. We are going to let you see a rehearsal of the popper performing penguins instead. I thank you. In a dignified way, the poppers and the penguins walked out on the stage and Mrs. Popper sat down at the piano. Aren't you gonna take off your gloves to play? Asked the manager. Oh no, said Mrs. Popper. I'm so used to playing with them that I, I'll keep them on if you don't mind. Then she started Schubert's military march. The penguins began to drill very nicely, wheeling and changing their formations with great precision until Mrs. Popper stopped playing in the middle of the piece. The audience tapped vigorously. Vigorously means full of energy or powerfully. There's more to it, explained Mrs. Popper, half to the manager and half to the audience, where they form in a hollow square and march in that formation. It's so late, we'll skip that tonight and jump to the second part. You're sure you don't want to take your gloves off, madam, asked the manager. Mrs. Popper smiled, shook her, shook her head, and began Merry Widow Waltz. Ten of the penguins now formed in a semicircle as Nelson and Columbus in their midst put on a wild sparring contest. Their round black heads leaned far back so that they could watch each other with both round white eyes. Gork, said Nelson, punching Columbus in the stomach with his right flipper and then trying to push him over with his left flipper. Gaw, said Columbus, going into a clinch and hanging his head over Nelson's shoulder as he tried to punch him in the back. Hey, no fair, said the manager. Columbus and Nelson broke loose as the other 10 penguins looking on applauded with their flippers. Columbus now sparred politely with Nelson until Nelson hit him on the eye, whereupon Columbus retreated with a loud orc. The other penguins began to clap and the audience joined them. As Mrs. Popper finished the waltz, both Nelson and Columbus stopped fighting, put down their flippers, and stood still facing each other. Which bird won? Who's ahead? shouted the audience. Gook, said all 10 penguins in a semicircle. This must have meant luck, for Nelson turned to look at them and Columbus Lee immediately punched him in the stomach with one flipper and knocked him down with the other. Nelson lay there with his eyes closed. Columbus then counted 10 over the prostrate Nelson and, ag and again the 10 other penguins applauded. Prostrate means to lay down, stretch flat on the ground with your face down, okay? So remember, Nelson is laying down, right? The other penguins all look like all like Columbus to win, and so they all say "gook" at the end. That always makes Nelson look away, so Columbus can sock it good. Nelson now rose to his feet, and all penguins formed in a row and bowed to the manager. Thank you, said the manager, bowing back. Now comes part three, said Mr. Popper. Oh, Papa, said Mrs. Popper, you forgot to bring the two painting step letters and the board. That's all right, said the manager. I'll get the stagehands to bring some. In no time at all, a pair of ladders and a board were brought in, and Mr. Popper and the children showed the how the ladders are going to be set up with the board resting on top. Then Mrs. Popper began playing the pretty descriptive piece by the brook. At this point in the act, the penguins always forgot their discipline and got dreadfully excited. They would all begin shoving at once to see which could be the first to climb the ladders. However, the children had always told Mr. Popper that the act was all the funnier for all this pushing and scrambling, and Mr. Popper supposed it was. Okay, scrambling means to climb quickly around, okay? So now with a great deal of squawking, the penguins fought and climbed the ladders and ran across the board in complete confusion, often knocking each other entirely off to the floor below, and then hurrying to toboggan down the other ladder and knock off any penguins who were trying to climb up there.
This part of the act was very wild and noisy in spite of Mrs. Popper's delicate music. The manager and the audience were all holding their sides laughing. At last, Mrs. Popper got to the end of the music and took off her gloves. You'll have to get those ladders off the stage or I'll never get those birds under control, said Mr. Popper. The curtain is supposed to fall at this point. So the manager gave a signal for the curtain to go down and the audience stood up and cheered. When the ladders had been taken away, the manager had 12 ice cream cones brought in for the penguins. The secret word of this chapter is ice cream. Then Janie and Bill began to cry, so the manager ordered several more and everybody had one. Mr. Greenbaum was the first to congratulate the poppers. I don't mind telling you, Mr. Popper, that I think you've got something absolutely unique in those birds. Your act is a sensation, and the way you helped out my friend the manager here shows that you're real troopers, the kind we need in the show business. I'd like to predict that your penguins will soon be packing the biggest theaters from Oregon to Maine. And now to come to terms, Mr. Popper, he continued. How about a 10-week contract at $5,000 a week? Is that all right, Mama? asked Mr. Popper. Yes, that's very satisfactory, answered Mrs. Popper. Well then, said Mr. Greenbaum, just sign these papers and be ready to open next Thursday in Seattle. And thanks again, said the manager. Would you mind putting on your gloves again for just a minute, Mrs. Popper? I'd like you to start playing that military march again and let the penguin parade for a minute. I want to get my ushers in here to look at those birds. It would be a lesson to them. Okay, so now we stopped on page 100, okay, and that was chapter 15. Place your bookmark here.